Welcome to this edition of Kings and Queens, a royal history. Today, we'll be exploring the life of one of England's most famous monarchs, King Henry VIII. He was a man of many contradictions, a charismatic ruler and a brutal tyrant, a talented musician and a ruthless conqueror. But despite his flaws, he left an indelible mark on English history and played a pivotal role in shaping the modern world as we know it today. So, join us, as we delve into the life of this controversial king, and discover the mystery and intrigue that surrounds his reign. Born on June 28, 1491, Henry was the second son of King Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. Henry VII, the first Tudor king of England, faced significant opposition from the powerful nobles who had previously controlled the country. He was seen as a usurper to the throne, having won the crown through battle, rather than by right of succession. In addition to his questionable claim to the throne, Henry VII was known for his tight-fistedness, and his desire to accumulate wealth at any cost. He raised taxes, imposed fines, and extracted loans from his subjects in order to finance his rule. This led to widespread resentment among the English people, who saw him as a miserly and greedy king. Despite these challenges however, King Henry VII was able to consolidate his power and establish a strong monarchy in England, paving the way for the Tudor dynasty and laying the foundation for the reign of his son, King Henry VIII. Henry VIII's early life was filled with promise and potential. From a young age, he was groomed for the throne and received a rigorous education in the arts, languages, and military tactics. He was tall and athletic, with a charming personality and a love of music and poetry. The son of such an unpopular king, he was seen as a beacon of hope for England, with many expecting great things from the young prince. But as he grew older and took the throne, Henry VIII would prove to be one of the most complex and controversial figures in English history. Despite his early promise, Henry VIII's reign would be defined by conflict, both at home and abroad. He famously broke with the Catholic Church and created the Church of England, leading to a split with Rome that would have far-reaching consequences for England and Europe. He would also embark on a series of wars and conflicts, both domestically and abroad, that would shape the course of England's history for centuries to come. Henry VIII was just 17 years old when he succeeded his father to the throne in April of 1509. With his good looks and athletic prowess, Henry VIII was the epitome of a Renaissance prince, and the people of England celebrated his ascension to the throne with great excitement. However, beneath the surface, there was a sense of unease and uncertainty about what the future would bring. Henry's father had been shrewd and unpopular, and many feared that the young king would follow in his footsteps. Despite these concerns, Henry VIII quickly set about establishing himself as a strong and capable monarch. He surrounded himself with a trusted inner circle of advisers, and soon began to make his mark on the kingdom. One of the first actions Henry took as king was to marry the Spanish princess, Catherine of Aragon. Catherine was the daughter of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, two of the most powerful monarchs in Europe at the time, and the widow of Henry's older brother, Arthur, who had died in 1502. Catherine's marriage to Arthur had been intended to strengthen ties with Spain, as well as increase the legitimacy of the Tudor dynasty. Descended from an older son of King Edward III, Catherine potentially had a stronger claim to the British throne than Henry. Arthur's death put all of this careful political manoeuvring in jeopardy. A 16-year-old widow with no children could be sent home to her father, but if she returned to Spain, the miserly Henry VII would have to return her dowry, something he was notoriously loath to do. Finally, it was decided that Catherine would marry the young Prince Henry, and marry her he did, barely two months after he became king. Henry VIII was not quite 18 years old, and Catherine was 23. Following his coronation later that month, Henry made a bold move, by arresting his father's two most unpopular ministers, Sir Richard Empson and Edmund Dudley. They were charged with high treason, and eventually executed in 1510 marking the beginning of Henry's favourite political tactic, executing people who stood in his way. He returned some of the money that was believed to have been extorted by the two ministers, and pardoned some rivals for the throne who had been imprisoned by his father. The people of England began to hope that the reign of a kinder king had begun. 
Meanwhile, Henry's marriage to Catherine appeared to be going well, but a problem was looming on the horizon. The pair would struggle to have children. In January of 1510, Catherine gave birth to a daughter, but she was stillborn. About a year later she gave birth to a son, named Henry, but he died after only seven weeks. The couple continued to try and have children, with Catherine producing two more stillborn sons in 1513 and 1515. Eventually, in 1516, she gave birth to a girl named Mary, which brought some relief to the strained relationship between Catherine and Henry. On the continent, Europe was at war. France, allied with the Holy Roman Empire, was fighting in Italy. Although he initially offered his friendship to France, Henry later joined forces with the Spanish and Rome, gaining the support of the Pope and convincing Emperor Maximilian to switch sides. In 1513, Henry led an army to invade France, winning the Battle of the Spurs. Unfortunately, his absence from the country left England vulnerable. James IV of Scotland, allied with France, invaded England, where he was defeated and killed by the English army. In 1514, his finances strained by years of fighting, Henry signed a treaty with France and secured peace for nearly a decade. Back at home, Henry began to be plagued by a thorny problem. He had no son to follow him as king. Catherine had given birth six times, with only one daughter still living to show for it. Although Henry had a living son, born out of wedlock to one of his mistresses, what he needed most was a legitimate heir. With Catherine approaching the age of 40, it was increasingly unlikely that she could produce one. Without an heir, Henry had three options. Somehow legitimize his illegitimate son. Arrange a marriage for his daughter Mary, and hope for a grandson who could take the throne. Or, somehow get rid of Catherine, and replace her with someone young enough to bear children. For Henry, the third option seemed like the easiest. His attraction to 25-year-old Anne Boleyn likely played a role in this decision. Her older sister, Mary, had been one of the king's mistresses for several years and was rumoured to have borne him two children. Henry never acknowledged them though, and Mary was eventually put aside. Well-educated and intellectual. Anne was too intelligent to repeat her sister's mistake. She refused to become another in a long line of the king's mistresses, insisting that she would not sleep with Henry unless they were married. After a year of pursuit, Henry proposed to her in the summer of 1527. Anne accepted. All that was left to do was to get rid of his current wife, something that proved to be more easily said than done. Henry assumed that he would be able to annul his marriage to Catherine, in part because she had previously been married to his older brother. Catherine's marriage to Henry had required a special dispensation from the Pope, but Henry pointed to the lack of a male heir as proof that their union was cursed, blighted by God. When he brought this appeal to the Pope, he quickly discovered that Pope Clement VII was heavily influenced by the new Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, Catherine's nephew. The Pope feared that annulling Henry and Catherine's marriage would lead to political and military retaliation from the Holy Roman Empire. Additionally, the Pope believed that annulling the marriage would set a dangerous precedent and weaken the authority of the Church. Despite Henry's attempts to sway the Pope with threats and political maneuvering, the Pope refused to grant the annulment. This left Henry in a tricky situation. He was openly engaged to another woman, but Catherine refused to retire quietly to a nunnery. With the Pope's support, her position as the king's legitimate wife was unassailable. At least, it would be, if Henry continued to recognize the religious authority of Rome. Instead, Henry took matters into his own hands, and defied the Catholic Church. He separated from Catherine in 1531. In 1532, a series of acts were brought before Parliament, asserting that only the king had supremacy over the Church in England, not the Pope. This gave him the authority to annul his own marriage. After 24 years together, his marriage to Catherine of Aragon was declared null and void, legally as if it had never happened. Their daughter Mary was also declared illegitimate, clearing the way for a new set of heirs. In 1533, after six years of courtship, Henry VIII was married to Anne Boleyn. Happily for the desperate king, his new wife immediately fell pregnant. 
She gave birth within the year to a daughter, named Elizabeth, after Henry's mother. Despite the fact that Anne had produced a living child on her first attempt, Henry began to cool towards her. He had been convinced that she would have a son, even going so far as to arrange a celebratory tournament and preparing letters announcing the birth of a prince. When Elizabeth was born, the tournament was hastily cancelled, and the letters amended to say that he had another daughter. Anne miscarried her second pregnancy by the end of 1534, and Henry began to speak of the possibility of divorcing her. Nothing came of it at the time, and by the autumn of 1535 she was pregnant again. But early in 1536, she suffered another miscarriage, spelling the beginning of the end. Henry, having risked everything to obtain a son, was not about to waste time on a woman who couldn't deliver. Although the exact circumstances surrounding her downfall remain the subject of much speculation and debate among historians to this day. Anne Boleyn was committed to the Tower of London on May 2, 1536. She was charged with adultery, incest, and treason, and condemned to death. Seventeen days later, on the 19th of May, she was executed by beheading. Her marriage to Henry, and her reign as queen, had lasted a mere three years. Henry wasted no time replacing his fallen wife. His newest mistress, Jane Seymour, was already waiting in the wings, and had been installed into new quarters months earlier. Jane had been a lady-in-waiting to both Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn, and she and Henry were married just eleven days after his second wife was executed. Jane was highly prized by the king for her demure and submissive personality. A sharp contrast to the outspoken and headstrong Anne Boleyn. Unlike his previous queen, she was popular with the people as well. Her public compassion for Catherine of Aragon, now dead, and her efforts to reconcile Henry with his daughter Mary, made her a symbol of stability and normalcy after the turbulence of Henry's first two marriages. On October 12, 1537, Jane Seymour achieved something that had eluded Henry VIII for nearly thirty years. She successfully delivered a healthy son, who would survive beyond infancy. Her son, Prince Edward, would later reign briefly as King Edward VI, but Jane herself was not so fortunate. She died just twelve days later, of complications from childbirth, less than eighteen months after her marriage. Despite her short time as queen, Jane was buried with great ceremony in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. She is often remembered as Henry's most beloved wife, and was the only one of his wives to receive a queen's funeral. Following her death, Henry is said to have worn black for three months. He would not remarry for over two years, the longest he would wait between marriages for the rest of his life. In the years following Jane's death, Henry's attention turned to the European continent. He feared that England was vulnerable to attack by Roman Catholic countries, and it seemed prudent to use his next marriage to cement a political alliance. The king's adviser, Thomas Cromwell, suggested the 25-year-old sister of the Duke of Cleves, Anne. A member of a powerful German family, she was known for her beauty and charm. Not content to rely on rumour, Henry sent an artist, Hans Holbein the Younger, to the continent to paint a portrait of her. Pleased by the portrait and reassured of her beauty by her reputation, Henry agreed to the match. She arrived in England in January of 1540, but things rapidly began to go wrong. An ambassador at court reported that Henry VIII came to meet Anne, dressed in plain clothing to disguise his identity. He wanted to know what she would think of him. Unfortunately, she did not appear to regard him very highly, or pay him much attention, and from that moment forth, Henry claimed that Anne was unattractive, much uglier than she had been represented in her portrait. He even went so far as to try and find a way to avoid the marriage entirely, but unfortunately, it was impossible to reject her without damaging the alliance he had forged. Henry VIII and Anne of Cleves were married on 6 January, 1540, but the marriage was never consummated. Henry claimed she was so unattractive he had no desire to bed her, stating, I liked her before not well, but now I like her much worse. Historians have speculated that instead, the aging king might have been impotent. By this time he was nearly fifty years old, and had gained a massive amount of weight in the year since Jane Seymour's death. Whatever the cause, by summer, Henry had decided to be rid of his unwanted queen. On July 12, 1540, their marriage was annulled. 
Anne of Cleves had been married to the king for just over six months. Despite the end of her marriage, Anne was well treated by the king and was given a generous settlement, including several properties and a yearly income. This is likely because she did not object to being set aside, even assisting Henry in obtaining the annulment by testifying that their marriage had not been consummated. She became known as the king's beloved sister and was a popular figure at court. Anne of Cleves lived a comfortable life in England until her death in 1557, at the age of 42. Just over two weeks after his fourth marriage was annulled, Henry married the young Catherine Howard, a former lady-in-waiting, and a cousin of Anne Boleyn's. No definitive record of her age exists, but historians estimate that Catherine was somewhere between 15 and 20 years old when she married the 49-year-old Henry. Young, pretty, and vivacious, it is said that Henry indulged her every whim, but sadly this state of affairs was not to last. Catherine was alleged to be unfaithful to Henry, carrying out flirtations and exchanging letters with one of the king's courtiers, Thomas Culpepper. In November of 1541, she was stripped of her titles and imprisoned, only to be executed on February 13, 1542. She was at most 21 years old and had been queen for only 16 months. It was about a year and a half later that Henry was married for the sixth and final time, this time to wealthy widow, Catherine Parr. At the age of 31, Catherine had already outlived two husbands, but had no children of her own. Much more mature than the unfortunate Catherine Howard, Catherine Parr took pains to develop relationships with the king's three surviving children. Mary would have been 27, Elizabeth 9, and Edward only five years old when she married their father. Through Catherine's influence, Mary and Elizabeth were returned to the line of succession, a move that would have far-reaching consequences. Over the course of his reign, Henry VIII had become one of the most influential monarchs in English history. His rule had seen the country break away from the Roman Catholic Church, the formation of the Church of England, and secured the powerful Tudor dynasty that would rule England for over a century. As his final years approached, it was clear that his legacy was of crucial importance, not just for England, but for the wider world. Henry's health had deteriorated significantly as he grew older. The king, who was once known for his athletic prowess and impressive physique, was beset by a number of health problems that greatly impacted his ability to rule. He suffered from gout, obesity, and injuries sustained from jousting. He also developed ulcerated legs which caused him immense pain and made it difficult for him to walk or stand for extended periods of time. Despite these health problems, Henry was determined to maintain his power and control over England. He continued to take an active role in government affairs, attending meetings and making important decisions. However, his physical decline had a noticeable impact on his demeanor, and he became increasingly irritable and prone to fits of anger. On January 28, 1547, at the age of 55, Henry VIII died. He had ruled for over 37 years, and was succeeded by the son, for whom he had risked so much. Edward was only nine years old at his father's death, and so a regency council was established to govern the kingdom until he came of age. This council, made up of prominent nobles and churchmen, would play a crucial role in shaping the future of England during a time of great political and religious upheaval. In the aftermath of Henry VIII's death, England was plunged into a period of political uncertainty. With the young king at the helm and a regency council in place, factions and power struggles emerged within the court and among the country's noble families. The religious upheaval that began during Henry VIII's reign reached new heights during the reign of his son. This led to tensions between the two sides and a deepening of the religious divide within England. The legacy of Henry VIII and his reign would continue to shape England for centuries to come. As we look back on Henry VIII's life, we can see the impact it had on the shaping of England and the legacy it left for future generations. From his break with the Catholic Church and establishment of the Church of England, to his six marriages, Henry VIII was a figure who left a lasting impact on the history of England and beyond. His reign was a turning point in English history, marked by political, religious, and cultural transformation. Henry VIII's pursuit of a male heir led him to divorce, annul, and execute his wives. 
These actions had far-reaching consequences for the English people, not only in terms of the reformation of the Church, but also in terms of the relationships between England and other European powers. Despite the controversies surrounding his reign, Henry VIII is remembered as a charismatic figure who left an indelible mark on England and its people. His legacy continues to be studied and debated by historians and scholars, and his reign remains an important chapter in the history of England and the world. As we reflect on the life and marriages of Henry VIII, it is important to acknowledge both the good and the bad, and to understand the complex motivations that led him to make the choices that he did. Through a closer examination of his life and reign, we can gain a deeper appreciation of the time in which he lived, and the lasting impact he had on England. And beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please like, and subscribe to my channel, so that you won't miss a thing. There's more fascinating content coming your way, all the time. Thank you.